Hello everyone, back to into today's video. Going to have a look at well next week, the same days for today's video. Uh, so it's going to take us to around the uh, 26th of January, going into the second half of the month. We'll see what's happening in the stratosphere as well in the uh, North Pole. Uh, and we'll have a look at CFS V2 next month, so a lot to cram in. Now we've got some quite cold weather with us at the moment. We've got cold northwesterly winds. They bring wintry showers into uh, northern and western parts of the country uh, as well. Um, and we'll have a look at this more depth. In more depth, I think, tonight on Snow Watch. It'll be around 7 o'clock this evening. We'll begin, though, by having a look at the radar picture from the weather outlook. You can see lots of showers here across northern and uh, western parts of the country as well. Uh, so these showers are producing quite a bit of snow. If you have a look at the precipitation type forecast, um, that's the latest. You can see that there is uh, quite a lot of snow there across parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland, also coming down into northern parts of England as well. For the south east of that, it's been more of a wintry mix, but has been a few flakes in through parts of uh, Wales into the Midlands, who of course have this afternoon, or so far this afternoon, into the far south and southeast, it's been mainly dry. But these showers in the north are very beefy. You can see there's some bright pink colours in there, in case some heavy falls of snow, and that is enough to be producing um, accumulations of snow in uh, some places. So uh, quite significantly snowy there for uh, northern parts of the country this afternoon. We will have a bit more of a look at this in Snowwatch later. I uh, just bring you up to date what's happening in the stratosphere. So this is the uh, temperature forecast from the GFS model for um, 10 HPA. Now you remember, but around the 23rd, 24th of January, the uh, the um, GFS have been indicating that we might get a sudden stratospheric warming at this top level of the atmosphere. Well, very Quickly over weekend, the GFS uh, eradicated that idea. So now this is the temperature forecast for the 24th of January. No sign of a sudden stratospheric warming. We are having a modest warming across uh, Eurasia and going into sort of um, some parts of uh, Russia and through Europe. But over the pole, in the, I mean, in the stratosphere over the pole, we've still got these blue colours here indicated the cold temperatures at 10 HPA uh, on the 24th of January. I'll just run you through. And you'll see that a bit of a warming does occur over uh, Russia and Siberia. There it is on the 28th. But not reach anywhere near the kind of level of warming that the GFS model was indicating a while ago. And as we go into extended range, this takes us to the 31st of January, the 1st of February even. You see there's still no real sign of a sudden stratospheric warming. It is warming up a little bit uh, at 10 HPA generally across the Northern Hemisphere. And that's because we're moving out of the coldest period of the year, of course, by February. The uh, stratosphere will be starting to warm up on its own anyway. But there's no sign of a dramatic sudden stratospheric warming now uh, until the end of January. So we'll keep looking. We are expecting a uh, stratospheric warming or a sudden stratospheric, stratospheric warming at some point uh, this winter. But up to the end of January, there's still no real sign of it. Uh, this is how the uh, ECWF is uh, for forecasting things as well. So this is for uh, a week's time. Again, this is looking at 10 HPA. The North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere is uh, just there, where that black uh, cross is just there. Uh, and you can see that, again, it is picking up a bit of a warming through sort of Europe and uh, parts of, um, into some parts of Russia, for example, as well. But again, not reaching the level of a sudden stratospheric warming. That takes us up to uh, the 10th day, which is the 15th of uh, January. Um, well, I should say it is 25th of January, generate on the 15th of January, two, 240 hours away. Again, there's the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere features there. And the mid latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere are warming up a little bit across Europe and into Russia. But again, no real sign of a sudden stratospheric warming this side uh, of the end of January. So uh, for the next sort of couple of weeks, at the moment, it may change at the moment, but there's no sign of a sudden stratospheric warming. We will keep uh, looking. This is the temperature, uh, sensing temperature so far. So this is how uh, January is shaping up up to the middle of the month. So this is provisional to the 15th of uh, January. We stand 
at 4.8 degrees, which is an anomaly of 1.3 degrees uh, above average. So, um, actually, that's been a little bit of a mild of an average uh, first half to January. That's going to tick down a bit over the next few days because we have got some quite cold weather uh, coming up. But uh, at the moment, actually, January has been a little bit uh, mild of an average by around 1 degree. This is how the GFS temperature and precipitation uh, ensembles are looking for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're looking at the ensemble for Warrington uh, today. So the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average. We're colder than average now. We're going to stay generally colder than average through to the weekend. Anyway, we are going to get that little spike up there. That's associated with quite a deep area of low pressure that's going to be um, moving in overnight uh, on Wednesday night into Thursday, bringing possibility of some stormy weather. We'll have more about that on um, Snow Watch later. It's going to be like a Snow Watch and Storm Watch combined, uh, if you like. So we'll have more about that later on. After that, once that goes away, then it's colder to the weekend. And then next week, the uh, model is seeing a gradual recovery in the upper air temperatures, albeit quite a slow one. In terms of precipitation spikes, so that's for uh, rainfall or precipitation associated with Wednesday night's area of low pressure. Other than that, it's a showery through the rest of the week and into the weekend. And then next week, we've got rainfall spikes coming back. It looks like a continuation of generally quite uh, unsettled weather. This is how the uh, surface temperatures are looking for Warrington. So again, we're starting off quite cold today. We're going to keep it cold generally through to the end of the week and into the weekend. Early next week, we see the temperatures gradually starting to pick up for a while. And then probably the suggestion, if anything, that they're beginning to drop down a little bit as we go through these final days of uh, January. Overall, I would say quite cool, actually, for uh, the next couple of of winds. Temperature anomalies looking like that from the 16th 24th of January, generally coming out a bit colder than average for the UK and Ireland, as it is for much of Scandinavia. Many southern and eastern parts of Europe are still coming out milder than average. Precipitation anomalies are looking like this. Uh, so much of the UK... East parts of the UK actually a little bit drier than average now with these, uh, a bit wetter than average out in West. So I'm not sure about that based on the ensembles. I think we are in for quite unsettled weather again through the course of uh, next week. So in South, the GFS is looking for Friday, still bringing in those cold northwesty winds. They'll have wintry showers associated with them. And then as we go through into Saturday, again, winds are still in from the north, so cold weather persists through to the weekend. Uh, Sunday, we're trying to move low pressure in off the Atlantic. It may be a little bit of a slow old process, and there could be sort of some messy uh, breakdown type weather in with that as well in the second half of the weekend, maybe rain or possi possibility of some snow. But by the time we go through to Monday, it looks like the Atlantic is starting to break through, and that will bring some milder air in then through the early part of next week. This how things looking by the middle of next week, Wednesday 24th of January. Might be seeing signs that the jet stream is beginning to dig back to our south again. So possibly trying to pull some colder air uh, back from the north with those areas of low pressure. We run up to day 10, or we get to day 10. That's how we're looking. Low pressure up to the northwest, high pressure down to southwest. Relatively mild southwesty wind, but notice heights are rising to our north and to our northeast as well. So we're trying to get high pressure going over Scandinavia uh, once again. Overall, that looks relatively mild through the course of uh, next week, but cold for, for this week and for much of the coming weekend. East End UF looks like that. So again, still in those cold north northwest winds on Saturday. There's that low pressure coming in on Sunday. That's trying to bring milder air in from off the Atlantic. And what happens as we get through to Monday is that there's a little bit of a stall of that low pressure, actually. It begins to slip more towards our southeast. So for northern parts, actually, that could be a snow event Sunday to Monday. And uh, by the end of Monday, we're pulling in cold northerly winds again across all parts of the country. Then we raise this ridge across the country uh, in a week's time. So that's maintaining quite cold, dry, frosty weather. And then the East End of in, it, in, it, in its extended range wants to take that high pressure up to Scandinavia. Now, I'm not at all sure about this, 
um, the high pressure is trying to set up over Scandinavia. It's trying to get wind into the east. Let's see what the uh, cold, um, well, how much of a cold pool there is to our east. So it's quite an extensive cold pool to the east. So it wouldn't take much of an adjustment from that. So that's bringing some bitterly cold easy winds. But this has been a bit of a flaw with the ECMWF this winter. We saw it a bit last winter as well, where it wants to get high pressure over Scandinavia for some reason, get winds into the east. So it's a little bit of a flaw, I think, within the model. And I think you have to be very, very cautious uh, about that. But certainly for the early part of next week, it is colder, the ECM you have in this period, sort of Monday, Tuesday. It is colder than the GFS. And actually on Monday, Sunday to Monday, this area of low pressure, there is a risk of some sort of snow event for northern parts of the country, which the GFS doesn't really show. The GFS just has a straightforward push with the milder winds off the Atlantic. So, uncertain for the early part of next week how quickly that milder air gets in. And then, obviously, this part of the ECMWF run that takes a high pressure up to Scandinavia and hints over that, but hints of trying to get wind into the east. I think that is very, very speculative uh, indeed. Just have a look at CFS V2 for uh, the next month. So uh, these are 500 mm of our heights broken down into week periods. The first week period take us from the 16th to the 22nd of January. The coming week finds below average heights to over and to our east, above average heights to our west. And let's change the colour also going up to the north as well. So that looks quite cold. We'll be bringing the air down from the north or the northwest. And with that trough, there's a risk of some wintry precipitation coming through as well. Uh, then we go through to week two, which is the 23rd to 29th of January. And this is similar to what that ECMWF run was showing, actually. This final week of January on this morning's CFS is uh, raising heights to the northeast. And that is very much indicating that we'll be turning winds into the east there. So that's bringing cold air in from the east for the last week of uh, January. January, We will be ending the month on really quite a cold note if that came on. It is similar to what that ECMWF run was showing. So it does offer some support to the ECM idea of trying to get high pressure over Scandinavia. But I think because of the letdowns that we've had with EC winds and Scandinavian highs again this winter so far, we do have to be very uh, cautious about that development. Then we go through to week three, which is the 30th of January to the 5th of February. High pressure is still to our east, but it's more sort of across central Europe. With low pressure out to the west, we're probably bringing up some milder, or let's say less cold, uh, sort of southerly winds rather like that. So you're not going to talk about very mild conditions, but probably less cold compared to that direct easterly that we had in uh, week two and then week four the 6th to the 12th of January just builds the ridge up over the UK northwestern parts of Europe and the jet stream is uh, going something like that as well so that's mainly dry and fine conditions probably with quite a lot of frost I would have thought uh, through that sort of second week of February does imply the CFS, but we're going to see weather setting down for the early part of February, probably with frost and fog. Uh, just quickly, temperature anomalies for the next week. They're coming out colder than average, quite substantially so, actually, from the 16th to 22nd of uh, January. Then we go through to um, week... Uh, we go through to week two. That's it. And uh, that one also is coming out colder than average. That's when the wind is in from the east, remember. Week uh, three, not sure what's happening there. Week three shows that uh, we're coming out uh, generally on the warmer than average side then in week three. And then finally for week four, that is also coming out warmer than average. Remember, that's under a ridge of high pressure. So um, what you'd have to factor in there is that the model is seen warmer than average underneath that ridge, but there would be a risk of quite significant uh, night frost and fog and that high pressure as well. I think we leave all of that stuff alone. It's very speculative and we know there's uncertainty even within the next few days, never mind looking ahead to uh, February. So what um, we're facing for us this week is cold generally. It's going to turn a little bit less cold with that storm system on Wednesday night, but uh, 
that's going to bring its own problems, and we'll have a more about that in Snow Watch uh, slash Storm Watch uh, this evening. Um, then cold after that for the rest of the week, and that cold weather lasting into the weekend. There is a question mark late in the weekend and early next week as to how quickly the Mara Air gets in from off the Atlantic. Eventually, I think the Mara Air will probably push through, at least for time, early next week. How long will have to wait for cold weather to return? And whether it returns via those easy wings, I think that is something else that we've also got to think about in a few more days' time. Right, come back later on for Snow Watch. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.